Let's move on and talk about immigration because it has been a huge problem or was a huge problem for the previous Conservative government. We had the Rwanda plan which was on there. Whether or not it acted as a deterrent we don't entirely know. But Keir Starmer has come into power, he has scrapped Rwanda and what happens? The number of boats has gone up, 1,185 crossings now since Labour has come to power. That's a pretty dismal record already. It's absolutely terrible. And, and the, of course, the Rwanda scheme uh, wasn't actually uh, implemented prior to the election. The first flight was due to go off on the 24th of July. That's a week from today. And that would have had a deterrent effect. We know that because when Australia did something similar about 10 years ago, um, they, that deterrent effect of that successfully stopped the illegal maritime arrivals into Australia. And when we initiated a returns agreement with Albania, um, that almost entirely stopped Albanians crossing the English Channel. So we know these returns and removals agreements uh, do work in terms of their deterrent effect. Um, I think very foolishly and wrongly, one of the first things Keir Starmer did um, after being elected was he cancelled the Rwanda scheme. Uh, and we are now seeing the consequences because there is now no deterrent at all. There's no threat of any deterrent. And as you say, in the last 10 days, um, since Labour were elected, we've seen well over a thousand people dangerously and illegally crossing the English Channel. And that is on Keir Starmer. He chose to cancel the deterrent effect of the Rwanda scheme. That was his choice. It was a big mistake. And these crossings are therefore his responsibility. Do you think he regrets that? Because the press is starting to turn on him, the Daily Express this morning. So how exactly will you stop the boat, Sakir? And of course, uh, we then heard uh, from various people uh, regarding this, this policy. Lee Anderson, for example, reform MP, saying, well, of course, Keir Starmer, his policy means that they're just going to buy bigger boats and get people across the channel. And also Kevin Saunders, who led the Border Force teams in Calais, uh, said Kurds waiting to cross the channel and come up with a name for Keir Starmer, which means the friendly one. There's no deterrent, as you say. Well, I'm afraid to say you're right. Keir Starmer has chosen uh, to get rid of the only deterrent policy we had, which was the Rwanda scheme. We could have had the first, as I say, I used to be a Home Office Minister looking after police and crime, but I obviously got briefed on wider Home Office issues. The first Rwanda flight was due to take off on the 24th of July, and Keir Starmer has cancelled the entire uh, the entire thing. Um, and unfortunately, it means more and more people will probably attempt the crossing, and that is Keir Starmer's fault. That's a result of his choice. Now, his, his, his stated policy is to, quote, go after the criminal gangs. But of course, the last government was doing that. The National Crime Agency was given the resources and the political direction to go after criminal gangs. They had a whole load of operations going across all of Europe and beyond targeting criminal gangs. So that's been happening already. There's no, there's nothing extra um, that can realistically be done there because the National Crime Agency were doing it already. So what Keir Starmer's done is given up the only deterrent we had, the Rwanda scheme, and we are now already 10 days in, we are seeing the consequences. I think on Monday of this week alone, over 400 people 425. crossed. 425. Yeah, 425. 425 on one day. And now I'm afraid is a taste of things to come, and that I mean, is entirely. I mean, Chris, Chris, Chris he says, he says, oh, well, actually, what we're going to do is set up a new UK border security command. I'm going to pay two hundred thousand to someone who heads it up. By the way, no one actually seems to want that job. Uh, we'll get the NCA together, the border force, MI5, bring them all together, a thousand extra stuff. Is it just repackaging? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, there was a, there was a small boat operational command already. There was a, there were two generals. Uh, employed by the Home Office, um, former army generals working on this problem. Um, the, the National Crime Agency uh, and the, the full range of the UK intelligence community's capabilities were already being deployed um, against this threat, against the criminal gangs. So nothing he has proposed is new at all. It basically amounts to changing the nameplate on somebody's door. The idea that that's going to do anything different or, or extra is ludicrous. Let's talk about housing because, of course, one of the big pledges set out in the King's speech is 1.5 million homes over five years, which is 300,000 homes a year, which is exactly the same target that the Conservative Party had there. So there is absolutely no difference there at all. Um, he has also, though, said he's going to reclassify the Green Belt into Grey Belt land, allowing him to build more houses. Also, there is this kind of dichotomy because they say, with one hand, we want more devolution, we want people to be in charge of their local environments but at the same time they're going to railroad things through against people in their local environments Th those two things can't be true at the same time 
That's right. So, of course, we um, support the need for more housing and we had the same housing target. The Conservatives actually delivered two and a half million homes during our time in office and delivered more homes uh, per year than the last Labour government did in 2010 when they left office. So we've got a good record on housing and um, we support more housing, but we do not support concreting over the green belt and the idea because you can deliver housing without needing to do that you can prioritize brownfield sites you can build tall buildings in city centers there's a load of ways you can build new towns outside the green belt there's a whole load of ways you can deliver those housing targets without concreting over the green belt and the idea that you suddenly get out a pen and redesignate a whole massive swathes of the green belt a so-called gray belt uh, is ridiculous that's obviously uh, simply a bit of shameless spin that would make even Peter Mandelson blush. Uh, no one is fooled <laughs> by that. No one is fooled by that at all. Um, and you, you were right also to point out that um, what the new Labour government apparently is planning to do, intending to do, is override local authorities, democratically elected local councillors who represent people in their local areas. They're planning to overrule those by using the central government planning powers. Um, and that is, as you quite rightly said a minute ago, completely at odds with Labour's claim that they're going to devolve more powers to local authorities and to local mayors. So what they're, they're saying one thing and then they're doing completely the opposite. So you can see already just in the first kind of 10 days of this government, you know, um, being weak on borders, uh, hypocrisy uh, when it comes to devolution to local authorities, and ripping up the green belt, there's quite a lot to be concerned about, even after 10 days. Uh, is there a sense that actually they are new in the job, that suddenly they have to now just not talk? You can't just talk a good game, you actually have to deliver it. And I just wonder whether this decision uh, that uh, they they have done, for example, to scrap Rwanda, and then you've got David Miliband leaping around with the ukulele, uh, then actually railroading things like Sunica through, do, have they really thought through the consequences of all this? No, I don't think they have. Um, it's kind of gesture politics. They're doing what is easy and what they think will appeal to their core supporters, like scrapping Rwanda, without realising the consequence is going to be tens of thousands of illegal immigrants crossing the English Channel, putting their own lives at risk, as well as uh, ruining our border security. Another good example is uh, Ed Miliband's decision um, to cancel all of the oil and gas applications in the North Sea that are currently being made. That means our energy prices are going to get higher because we're not going to be able to get gas easily from the North Sea uh, into our system. It's obviously a lot more expensive to import it by uh, getting shipfuls of liquefied natural gas brought in um, from Qatar, which is obviously thousands of miles away, um, mm. and you've got to liquefy the gas to get it here in the first place. So link that decision will increase energy bills for families in this country, and it will make us more reliant on foreign imported gas from countries that are not always necessarily completely reliable. So there's another um, terrible decision uh, which Labour have taken just now. Another good example is of, of words rather than actions is Wes Streeting, the Health Secretary, standing up about a week ago um, after the election, saying that it was the government's policy that the NHS um, is broken. I was ex then expecting him to go on to explain what he was going to do to fix it, but he didn't. He just said, oh, the NHS is broken. Well, just saying that doesn't help anybody. What we need from the government is a clear plan, and we don't have one. We just have words rather than actions and plans. It's really important, Chris, that we have an effective opposition, a united opposition. So what are you going to do in terms of that? We're going to see all of these people coming out to bid to lead the Conservative Party. Tom Tugendhat is going to announce his Tory leadership bid. Priti Patel, Kemi Badnock, for example. Who would you put your money behind? Well, I'm open-minded. Um, I'm a floating voter when it comes to the leadership campaign, so we'll see what we'll see what happens. But you're right to say we need an effective opposition. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm sitting here this morning talking about these issues because we do need to hold this new government to account. They, have, you know, we've already talked about in the last few minutes about four or five different things they've done, which, in my view, uh, are mistakes. And it is up to us in opposition, even though we're few in number now, um, to stand up. Uh, for the British public and hold this government to account and not let them abuse their very large majority to railroad through policies which are going to damage our national interest, make our borders less secure and uh, cost families money. Very good to talk to you, Chris. Thanks ever so much for your time.